In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Our overarching topic is who will go to heaven. I want to focus on one word that Jesus said to answer this question. The word is strive. Let us go through the context in which Jesus mentioned this word because I think it is really important. The context or the story of the word strive goes like this. Someone asked Jesus, Lord, are there few who are saved? This question always comes to my mind. It is like when a student asks his or her teacher how many students will pass. What are the statistics? What is the percentage? How many students? Surely he or she is worried that if a few have passed, he may not be of those who have passed. Let's say you're in the junior year of college and you hear that 20% of the students have passed. This means that there are four out of five possibilities that you failed, right? Then of course you will panic. 20%? You may think that you are one of the 80% who failed. Therefore, the question revolves around the result. Our Lord Jesus could have answered with some kind of percentage, few or many. However, Jesus did not answer this question with the words few or many. Instead, he answered by giving the way. Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. So tell me what's the result? No, it's not about the percentage because the real answer was few. He said, strive because there are many who will want to go to heaven but won't be able to. By implication, only a few will go to heaven. This makes one's heart skip a beat, but it is important to listen to. When once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us, and he will answer and say to you, I do not know you, where you are from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you, where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, they, of course, are of the few that were chosen, right? And you yourselves, speaking to the Jews, thrust out. They will come from the east and the west, from the north and the south. This confirms that Christianity is not only for Jews, but for everyone. And sit down in the kingdom of God. And indeed, there are last who will be first, and there are first who will be last. That's Luke 13, verses 25 to 30. The first message I want to convey, and I'm sorry if it's upsetting, is that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. What does this mean? It means that many people surely want to go to heaven, but not all those who want to go to heaven will be able to. This is frightening. Many will seek to enter and will not be able this implies that the desire, the desire or intention is not a bad thing, as there are people who still care and they hope to go to heaven. Thus, they are trying, but these attempts were not serious. They didn't strive as Jesus expressed it. Just like a diligent student, it requires striving. I find it strange that some Christianity precepts say that salvation doesn't require striving. It is so evident. Striving or diligence is essential. God indeed wants all people to be saved, but, my beloved, you have to strive. Jesus has already paid the price, and your name is written in heaven, so preserve it. Speaking frankly, Jesus is saying that many will seek to enter, which represents intent, their intention. They want to go to heaven, but they will not be able to. By the way, the parable of the sower answers the question. This is in the one in Matthew 13 from verse 1 to 9 and verses 18 to 23 to further explain how many good or fruitful soils were there. One out of what? It was one out of four types of soils in the parable. Three failed, only one succeeded. This means that few will bear fruit. Few will be saved. That is, those who will go to heaven. One of those grounds was described as stony ground. Jesus described them as he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. When someone listens, listens to a sermon and says that it has some good words, this does not mean that he or she will go to heaven just for being impressed by the words. Instead, he or she must strive to live by these words. Being impressed by the words is not conclusive evidence. This represents a wake-up call. That's why Jesus put it another way after the Sermon on the Mount, when he said, those who listen to the words and don't live by them are like one who builds a house on sand. It's like the houses we used to build on the sand when we were young. Waves would demolish the house. It's not a real house. So some people's faith is of this kind and will vanish. 
they will seek to enter and will not be able. Why is that? Because like we discussed how to love people and you all presented like 30 solutions, you testified against yourselves. Will any of you try one of these solutions? Will any of you strive to love someone who doesn't love you back? Or are you just attending the conference? If you say some nice words and listen to some and you do not push and exert some effort and pursue, you will not make it to heaven. So strive. This also applies to the thorny ground. The thorny ground was productive and it produced plants. However, the thorns simply choke the plants. The thorns represent what? They represent one's distractions. Every one of us is busy. Unfortunately, most of us are busy. Is being busy an excuse for me not to be held accountable? No. Life was given to us by God. He explained that one day this life will be suddenly over and one will be held accountable for this. So what if I did not finish them? Can I tell God, sorry, I was busy? This is unacceptable. This is frightening. This ground had the intention to produce plants and the thorny ground actually produced plants. However, it did not bear fruit. There is a huge difference between plants and fruit. The second and third grounds produced plants, but they did not bear fruit. So this does not count. The ground along the wayside is the worst kind of soil. It's the ground that does not care about anything. The first ground, the wayside on which the seeds fall, is the person who does not get affected in the first place. He probably will not even attend the conference. He does not care. He is not interested in listening to God's word. Even if he listens, the words will immediately vanish from his head. But all of those people cannot deny that they had the chance and their lives could have changed. So it is frightening, my dear ones, that attending church does not necessarily mean that we will go to heaven. I'm sorry, but you have to bear with me and hear this hard talk. Even if we fast, it is not enough, because who knows how you fast? And even if we avoid evil, this is good, but to what extent? The word or the password here is strive. Striving varies in degrees. All those who strive will go to heaven, but there are percentages of 30%, 60%, and 100%, even in striving. Similar to schools and colleges, there are some outstanding students and hardworking ones. However, those outstanding students include top-notch ones and also include those who are hardworking, but it's limited by their capacity. Let us put it in direct and practical messages so that these words will not be just some sermonic words. 